Hi, welcome to Distinti New Science Paradigm number one. This is the gateway feedback paradigm. Theories and models should never be treated as ultimate truths. This leads to scientific stagnation. If a person believes that the theory or model is the ultimate truth, they will not question it and will blindly defend it, much like a religion. In Rule of Action 3b, the greatest obstacle to science is the illusion that we think we know what we're doing. We need to treat theories as just as gateways. And this paradigm will demonstrate that good theories and models will provide the means to expand our capabilities, our footprint in the universe, which we'll explain, which will expose counterexamples that will usher in improved models and theories that will make the original model and theory obsolete. So theories are just gateways to more potent theories. Just like a gateway drug leads to more potent drugs. That's the way I'm using the word, gateway theories. So let's define footprint. In the new science paradigm, footprint refers to, our, to the scale of human knowledge and capabilities. Our knowledge, our speed at which we travel, which is a capability. Our extent on the face of the planet, the universe, and in time. We've only really been doing science well for maybe a hundred years, not even that well. And how precise we can measure something. Okay, that's also our capabilities. These are all part of our footprint. And small footprints are problematic. And I'm not pointing to his feet, I'm just pointing to the fact that in ancient Egyptian times, humans occupied a very, very, very small point of the earth. So small, in fact, that to their perspective, it looked flat. Because he if you focus in on a sphere small enough, that surface will look flat to you. And therefore, you're going to make the connection that we live on a flat world. Okay, And it's con that this idea of the flat earth was consistent with our very small footprint on the earth and our inability to measure things with any kind of precision. Consistent with our small pro footprint. But then gateways were developed. Our committee's principle allowed us to build larger ships with more confidence, which enabled longer sea journeys, expanding our footprint. Other gateways occurred together. Our foot ex other gateways occurred, and these other gateways could be like, I don't know, sailing technology, hull technology, all kinds of other technology that came together to expand our footprint. And eventually, we were able to observe the counterexample to the irrefutable flat earth model. For example, we were able to sail far enough and with telescopes be able to see the, the, the ship, the hull of the other ship sinking below the horizon, which was one indicator that the Earth is definitely not flat. There was a lot of other things. This is just one of the many examples. And then the spherical Earth model became the irrefutable truth for a while. But then our footprint expanded again, and even new and more precise instruments detected counterexamples to the spherical Earth model. So then the elliptical Earth model became the truth. But then our footprint expanded again, new or more precise instruments detected counterexamples to the elliptical Earth model. Like, well, how could they be a and now we, we learn today that the Earth, well, a while back, that the Earth is basically an amalgam of ellipsoidal shells. In other words, if you just took a whole bunch of different spherical shells and put them together in an almost elliptical fashion, that's really what the surface of the Earth is shaped like. I know that because when I was in the field artillery, we had to account for the curvature of the Earth based on the shell they were presently operating in, which I think is all done by computer now, so people don't have to worry about that. Then later, we learn about plate tectonics, where these shells are constantly moving and shifting, and nothing is constant, nothing is stable, things are always changing. Any theorem of mechanics I also propose that the Earth is expanding but losing mass as well. I'm not the first to propose that the Earth was expanding. They tried to propose the Earth was expanding over 100 years ago, but people kept saying, where's all the mass coming from? The Earth's mass isn't changing. And I'm showing the Earth's mass isn't changing. The Earth's mass is actually decreasing. But the Earth is expanding, just like popcorn. But anyway, that's another story for another video. So what did we learn? Scientific theory should never be considered irrefutable truths. They should only ever be considered gateways which enable us to expand our footprint such that counterexamples can be discovered and more potent theories developed. This is essentially what I call the gateway paradigm. Some words from Emir Lakatos. 
We should not think that a theory is ultimately true, only that no counterexample has yet been found. Okay, and scientific progress requires feedback. Okay, our committee's, like I showed in the example before, our committee's principle plus other engineering developments and scientific developments were, became the gateway to develop ships that could go fast. Then what happened is, because we were able to make ships go faster, we learned that when ships go fast, they actually sink down into the water, a technique that's not accounted for by our committee's principle. It's called squatting. And the only way we found out is because a ship ran aground where it never ran aground before. The reason why it ran aground, it was going faster than before, trying to escape an oncoming storm. And it struck an under, under sea reef that it never struck before. When they did the investigation, they figured out why. And pretty much because of that, we now use Bernoulli's principle, along with Pascal's pressure models, for more accurate ship hull design and ship buoyancy capabilities. And now, because of that improved, now we have a gateway to make even bigger and faster ships. And the thing just keeps going. So here's the feedback. We develop a tool or technology that feeds back and replaces the old ways of doing things. And now we've improved. We've gone from older models to newer models, from older looking ships to newer, faster ships. And things feed back. And this is a feed gateway feedback theory paradigm in one sheet. And this is a synopsis. We have theories and models which become a gateway to expand our footprint from our footprint. We find the counterexamples. We feed back to improve the theories or replace them, which expands our gateway to make an even bigger footprint. And this gateway feedback paradigm goes on and on and on. And that's how scientific, scientific progress progresses. So one thing we learn is that theories and models simply mean to expand our footprint. Okay, even refuted theories, theories of the even wrong theories can give good answers and serve as gateways. You don't have to have a true model or theory of the universe to have a useful model or theory of the universe. As long as it gives you answers you can use to expand your footprint, it's good enough to be used as a gateway. Lessons learned about feedback. In scientific advancements occurs when the expanded footprint exposes counterexamples which lead to gateway obsolescence, obsoleting the old theory, and replacement. Okay, and this is why we should look upon theories as only a means to provide for their own obsolescence, or to provide for the obsolescence of other theories. They don't necessarily have to make themselves obsolete, they can make other theories obsolescent, but as long as we are finding counterexamples to make our old theories obsolete, scientific progress is occurring. Holding on to old theories, tooth and nail, and Ignoring the counterexamples that are created is not scientific advancements. That's scientific stagnation. That is a scientific crime. So a good gateway model will provide for its own obsolescence or the obsolescence of others. This is scientific advancement under the new science paradigm. Gateways should never, ever be treated as irrefutable truths. Essentially, models and theories should never be treated as irrefutable truths. Models and theories should be looked upon as a means for their own demise or the demise of other theories. Okay, a bad gateway will foster stagnation. Worse, it may acquire a religious following who will never consider its obsolescence. That's based on the investment trap. So a bad gateway tell, if you have a theory that has not been superseded in two generations, and we're sure we're not, I mean, if we're done, if we, figure, if we have all the pieces of the puzzle and we're all done and we're figured out and we're traveling across the Milky Way galaxy in seven Earth days, then perhaps we're done. Okay, you could probably make that claim then, but not now. So we're still got theories that haven't been superseded in two generations, something is wrong. And if a theory of the universe or model of the universe has not been used to produce everyday consumer products, like you don't see dark matter hemorrhoid cream on the open market at your local CVS pharmacy, that should be an indicator that it's, it's gibberish, it's garbage. Because the only way that a theory is going to help scientific advancement, if it leads to products that will expand our gateway, 
and help us find counterexamples. And such a good thing should be useful in consumer products as well. And the other bad gateway tell is you have defended religiously by poorly trained scientists. And there's a poorly trained scientist tell. A poorly trained scientist will believe that they know the ultimate truth about the universe. Like, for example, a PhD physicist who told me that Maxwell's equations are irrefutable. Obviously, this person has never done any real work. And they think they're smart enough to declare universal constants in spite of the fact that our footprint in the universe is rather nil. They speak in terms of truth rather than utility. It's irrefutable. That has nothing to do with whether it's useful or not. In other words, what is in other words, speaking in terms of truth rather than utility is saying what it is rather than what it does. They, they, they like to use the word law in reference to observed phenomenon. Oh, you're good at the law of gravity. I saw, well, which implies we know the truth. However, our models only mimic the effects of gravity, which offers us only utility, not truth. We really don't know what gravity is yet. Oh, we have theories, but we have no introvertible uh, we, we, the best we can do is say we know how it works and we can use it we don't really know what it is and they're condescending to those who believe differently to them and I'm like well why, what do they fear? well, if a new theory turns out to be better than what they're using well not only are they out of a job but they're going to be looked upon as incompetent, well why didn't you come up with that? And so obviously they're going to hold on to their theories tooth and nail and discredit anybody else who tries to rain on their parade, as it were. And that's the indicator that science, to me, that science is stagnating. Blind commitment to a theory is not an intellectual virtue, it's an intellectual crime. Essentially, the gateway feedback paradigm encourages the obsolescence of older theories and models as this represents scientific progress. The obsolescence of scientific paradigms and constructs is also part of the scientific progress. And it's time to change the incentive paradigm of physicists from a destructive one to a constructive one. That's going to be covered in the Distinti New Science Paradigms number four. Okay, but there's more. Okay, this basically includes a formal part of the gateway feedback paradigm. In the following slides, I'm going to show the gateway feedback paradigm again in terms of tool development in order to demonstrate that this new paradigm has broad applications far beyond physics. Let's look at just regular tools. Okay, the gateway feedback, stone tools gave us a great mechanical advantage over just plain hands and arms. Gave us more efficient acquisition of raw materials and access to new materials, like essentially a larger footprint. From the stone axe, we're able to harvest wood a lot more efficiently. From the stone hammer, we were able to break up ore, and we ended up, these evolved and gave us a new bronze tools to replace with a, that lasted more, that were more shapeable, more adaptable, and you could do more things with them. And so bronze axes and bronze hammers ended up replacing stone axes and stone hammers. These gave us even more access to more materials, and that's what I just said. And then they became now the new gateway to access coal and get more, break up other minerals, and they ended up becoming the gateway to steel and iron, iron and steel. And so the stone tools became the gateway to bronze tools, which fed back and replaced stone tools, and they became the gateway for iron tools, which they fed back to replace bronze tools and now the iron tools are the gateway for the next and so these developments and this you can see this in semiconductors and everything how one level of semiconductor allowed us to do the next level of semiconductor and they became part of it because in the old days of semiconductors you had people in drafting rooms with laying out tape and those were photographed and that's how early integrated circuits were developed once these integrated circuits became inexpensive and available, they started developing inexpensive computers that would do the drawing and the grafting in a CAD computer-aided design environment, and then that started producing the next image, and then the next image, and the next image, and the next image. There's no way today that
that you can lay out a one gigabyte memory chip by hand. Okay, so this gateway feedback mechanism is in all realms of science and technology. Even in government and policy and how we do things today over what we did a thousand years ago. Anyway, thank you very much. Take care. Bye.